Okay, so this question we are given by the sphere equation and it's asking what radius of the sphere. So we have 2x squared plus 2yz, 2x, 2y squared plus 2z squared equals 8x minus 12y plus 2. Move 8x and minus 12y to the left side and leave the constant on the right side. So then it becomes 2x squared minus 8x plus 2yz plus 12z plus 2z squared equals 2. Every terms are kind of even, meaning you can divide those all by 2. So let's do that. This becomes x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus 6y plus z squared equals 1. So when you have those, and we're going to use completing the square. So if you do the completing the square, it becomes x squared minus 4x plus 4. So completing the square is basically, if you see the coefficient of like the x term, you divide that by 2 and then square it. So meaning x squared minus 4x can be written as x minus 2 because 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared. And since we squared it, we have to um, add the constant term as well. So x minus 2 squared is same as x squared minus 4x plus 4. So you have to add plus 4 in the right side. And then same logic, y squared plus 6y. So you're going to do the completing the square. So you can do y plus 3 squared. So you, you have the 6y divided by 2, which is 3, right? And then you square the value. This is 9. So you, since we have 9 on the left side, you have to add 9 on the right side as well, plus c squared. I'll just show you this visually. So this says x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus y squared plus 6y plus 9 plus c squared equals 1 plus 4 plus 9. So in the original equation, we don't have plus 4, right? That's why we add plus 4 on the left side. And in the original equation, we don't have plus 9. That's why we add the plus 9 on the right side. So, if you write this, this part is our radius squared, right? So r squared is 14 and r is then squared of 14. So the answer is D. So this question is find the values of x such that the vector x comma negative x over 2 is a unit vector. So if it says a unit vector, this means magnitude of the vector is 1. So how do you find the magnitude of the vector? It's basically if you have the vector like a comma b or something like that, then you square the each value a squared plus b squared and then you do the square root. So same logic, we have x comma negative x over 2 as our vector. So if you want to find the uh, magnitude, you do square root of x squared plus negative x over 2 squared. And this becomes x squared plus uh, x squared over 4. And this just becomes 5 over 4 x squared. And this value should actually equal to 1. So if you do some simplification, this becomes x times plus minus square root of 5 over 2 equals 1. So if that's the case, then x divided by um, square root of 5 over 2 on both sides, this becomes 1 times 2 over square root of 5, and this is just 2 over square root of 5 plus minus. I forgot that, sorry. So the answer is E. So this question is, let u and b given a three-dimensional vectors and how many of the following expressions are always mathematically valid. Let's look at the uh, first one first. And before actually we do that, let's define u and b, just, I don't know, just some random vectors. u equals uh, 1 comma 0 comma 0, and let's do b equals uh, 0 comma 0 comma 2. So first one says uh, vector b is greater and equal to 0. Vector b, that uh, when you see these like two lines over there, that means you want to find the magnitude of it. So this becomes 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 2 squared, and this is square root of 4, this is 2. 2 is greater and equal to 0. So 
this becomes one one is right and if you also suppose if what if b is like zero comma zero comma zero something like that then this will just become if you find the magnitude of it this will just become zero square plus zero square plus zero square which is zero if this is uh, greater and equal to zero so the answer works so i works okay let's do the number two u vector u plus b magnitude is same as vector u plus vector b okay let's do that vector u plus b is just one comma zero comma two and vector u is one comma zero comma zero and vector b is zero comma zero comma two okay so if you want to find the magnitude of it this becomes one squared plus zero squared plus two squared this is square root of five and this uh, 1 comma 0 comma 0 this just becomes uh, 1 square plus 0 square plus 0 square this is 1 I just put the um, question mark on those equal signs because we are not sure whether these are actually equal to each other and we do the magnitude we find the magnitude of 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 2 this becomes square root of the square root of zero square plus zero square plus four, and this just becomes two. Is square root of five equal to one plus two? Square root of five is three, so meaning square root of five equals to three. No, so the answer is no. So two is not true. Let's do three. Cross multiplication. You cross multiply b equals negative b cross multiply u. This is uh, generally true uh, as you learn in cross multiply cross product um, concepts. Whenever you uh, switch the order, it becomes a negative sign of it. I can show you too. So u becomes i, j, k, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. This is u cross multiply b. So this becomes just 0, 0, 0, 2, i, minus one zero zero two j plus um one zero 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 k so this just becomes zero i and this one becomes negative two j plus zero k so this is negative two j okay let's do uh, b times u b cross multiply u sorry so b cross multiply u i j k and b is zero zero two one zero zero so if you do cross multiplication this becomes zero zero two zero i minus zero one two zero j plus zero one zero zero k. This one becomes zero i, and this one becomes negative two, uh, zero and minus minus two negative two j in front of negative sign, and this becomes zero k. This becomes negative two because you know you do the um zero times zero first and then minus. 2 that's why it becomes negative 2 and also we have a negative sign in front of j component which makes it as a 2j so this is negative 2j is equal to negative 2j so the third one makes sense and let's do the number four dot product u dot b is equal to b dot u let's do that 1 comma 0 comma 0 is equal to uh, multiply by 0 comma 0 comma 2 this becomes 1 times 0 0 plus 0 times 0 0 plus 0 times 2 is also 0 so this is 0 b times u let's do that b is 0 comma 0 comma 2 and 1 is, u is 1 comma 0 comma 0 and this just becomes 0 times 1 0 plus 0 times 0 0 2 times 0 is 0 this is all 0 so these values are equal to each other so 4 works so one thing you should note is whenever you do, do dot product, it doesn't really matter of the order, but when you do cross product, it does matter. And when you change the order for the cross product, you have to put the negative sign on it. And the fifth one, let's see. The fifth one is uh, u, where, right there, b. The first one is u dot b is equal to u, um, u absolute value or magnitude, magnitude actually, u 
at magnitude B magnitude sine theta. And when you, if you remember those like um, dot product equation with the angles, it's not sine theta, it's cosine theta. So this is wrong. So that makes us have one, three, and four right, meaning that there are three correct answers. So the answer for this question is C. Okay, so this question has to find um, the cross product u cross multiply b when the given vector is u equals 2 comma 1 comma 0 and b equals 1 comma 0 comma 1. So this is quite simple. Okay, let's do it. U, that, u cross multiply b, write i, j, k component, and u is 2, 1, 0, and b is 1, 0, 1. So if you write this, this becomes 1, 0, 0, 1, i component minus 2, 1, 0, 1, j component plus 2, 1, oh, sorry, 1, 0, k. So 1 times 1, this is 1, and minus 0 times 0 is 1. So this is 1i minus 2 times 1 is 2, and then minus 0 times 1 is 0, so it is just 2j plus 2 times 0 is 0, but minus um, 1, comma 1, 1 times 1 is negative 1. This becomes 1i minus 2j plus negative 1k. So this just becomes 1, comma negative 2, comma negative 1. So the answer choice that I can actually see for that is C. Okay, so this question is uh, how can we the work done by pulling a sled two meters horizontally with a constant force of five newtons at an angle thirty degrees Celsius, thirty degrees. So the work is equal to force times distance. So we are given the force is uh, five newton, so five newton, and the distance um, distance becomes um, two meters two times cosine. 30 degrees of this because when you say force t uh, equals distance this just means force times the length of something at uh, magnitude and then cosine theta that's why we are doing 5n times 2 times cosine 30 so if you do that 5 times 2 is 10 and cosine 30 is square root of 3 over 2 so this just becomes 5 square root of 3 so the answer is oh that's moving. So the answer is A. So this question is find the value of x such that the vectors are orthogonal. When you say it's orthogonal, that means its dot product is equal to zero. So if you do one time one comma x comma zero dot two comma negative one comma two, that should equal to zero. So if you do one times two is two and x times negative 1, negative x, and 0 times 2 is just 0. So 2 minus x equal to 0, and this makes x equals to 2. So that makes the answer B. Okay, so this question is find the area of the region enclosed by the curves. Let's draw the curves first. If you draw it, uh, x equals uh, y squared. So this becomes this thing, x equals y squared and x equals 8 minus y squared, so there's an 8. So this becomes this shape, x equals 8 minus y squared. When you want to find the area of the region bounded by those curves, you do the uh, bigger radius minus the smaller radius, meaning the bigger radius is this much, right? And this is 8 minus y squared, right? And then the smaller radius is this much, right? So minus y squared equal and dy because it's from um, dy. We're integrating from dy. So meaning that our integ uh, integrand, like upper integrand. So I mean, uh, upper inter um, upper integration um, value should be equal to this value which is the intersection of x equals 8 minus y squared and x equals y squared. So let's set x 8 minus y squared and y squared equal. 
So a minus y squared equals y squared, and this becomes 8 equals 2y squared, and y squared is 4. And that makes y equals plus minus 2. So we are integrating from negative 2 to 2. So if you do that, negative 2 to 2, 8 minus 2y squared dy. But if you look at it, this uh, graph is um, looking symmetrical from the uh, x-axis, meaning we can do this negative 2 to 2 instead 2 times 0 to 2, 8 minus 2y squared dy. If you want to do this way, this, if you could, but if you just don't want to do with 2 times something or just you just want to do the integration from 8 minus 2y squared from zero, negative 2 to 2, you can do that. It doesn't matter. You can do it in both ways. So this becomes 2, 0 to 2, 8y minus 2y cubed over 3, integrating from 0 to 2. Plug in the values, 2 times 16 minus um, 16 over 3. And then if you plug it in zeros, that just becomes zeros. So, and this just becomes 2 times um, 48 minus 16, 32. So 2 times 32 over 3, this becomes 64 over 3. So the answer is B. Okay, so this question is find the volume of the solid whose space is the region are bounded by y equals x squared, the x-axis, and x equals 2 and whose cross-sections taken perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Okay, that's the important part, cross-section and squares. And let's draw the curves, y equals x squared, it's looking like this. So when you say, when you want to find the volume of the cross-section area, this is just same as volume equals cross-section area. So we are given that um, cross-section is perpendicular to the x-axis, so this axis, so this is x squared, and apparently the cross-section cross, uh, area is the square, meaning x squared and x squared. So that makes the cross-section area as x squared times x squared dx, and this is until 0 to 2, so this makes the upper bound as 2 and the lower bound as 0. So this is 0 to 2, x to x to the 4th power dx, x to the 5th over 5, 0 to 2 integrating. This just becomes 32 over 5, so the answer is C. Okay, so this question is find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the curves. So let's draw the curves then. Okay, so y equals ln x, so like this y equals ln x, y equals 1 half, something like this, and then x equals 0, oh, this is y equals 0, and then x equals 0, sorry, so like this region, and it's rotating around the y-axis, cool. So for this question, we are going to use um, this washer method. So this washer method is a perpendicular method, meaning we have to change y equals ln x to x equals e to the y instead. Because it's perpendicular to the axis, and perpendicular to the axis of this is this line. So that's why we are changing it. So this washer method is volume of pi integrand and then um, radius squared is the equation so for this one integrate the uh the bounds for this thingy is zero to one half as we see zero to one equals one half zero to one half and then the radius is squared so the bigger radius for this line bigger and actually the only radius for this um, region is just x equals e to the y, so e to the y squared dy. So m equals pi, 0 to 1 half, e to the 2y dy. So pi, e to the 2y, so this becomes e to the 2y over 2, integrating from 0 to 1 half. 
So this just becomes pi e over 2 minus e0 over 2. This just becomes pi e over 2 minus 1. So this will be um, pi over 2 e minus 1 if you rewrite this equation. So that's the answer, which is b. So this question is find the surface area of the surface obtained by the curves. Okay, the surface area equation is uh, a to b, some kind of you know, interval or bounds, 2 pi fx square root of 1 plus f prime x squared dx, if it's dx rotating about the x-axis. If it's rotating about the y-axis, you will change x into y. So we have that. So in our case, our fx is x cubed, and f prime x is 3x squared. So f prime x squared would be 3x squared squared, which gives you 9x to the fourth power. And our bound is 0 to 1, because we are given. 0 to 1, 2 pi, x cubed, square root of 1 plus 9x to the fourth power, dx. And we can use u substitution for this question. u equals 1 plus 9x to the fourth power. du becomes 36x to the cube dx. And x squared x cubed dx is equal to du over 36. And we have to change the bounds for this. This will be 1 plus 9, 0 to the fourth power. This is just 1. So this becomes 1. And 1 plus 9, 1 to the fourth power. This becomes 10. 1 to 10, 2 pi, um, du over 36, because we have x cubed and dx, which is equal to du over 36, and then square root of u. So if you rewrite this, this becomes pi over 18, 1 to 10, u 1 half du. So this will be pi over 18, u uh, 3 halves, and 2 thirds multiply and 1 to 10. So this will be just, um, I will just rewrite here. So pi over 18, mm, 2 over 3, 10 to the 3 halves, minus um, 2 over 3. There we go. We can take out 2 over 3 actually. And this will just become pi over 27, 10, 3 halves, and then minus 1. So the correct answer for this question is A. Okay, so this question is to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the curves. So let's draw the curves first y equals x squared and y equals x like this x equals 3 so the area bound bounded by the region is this much okay and now let's look at our answer choices it starts with the dx and it's 3 to 1 we are given and it starts with 2 pi this means they're using the shell method. The shell method volume is 2 pi uh, integration, shell radius, shell height, and shell thickness. In the given equation for the answer choices, it, start, it all starts with 0 to 1. So it's b equal 2 pi 0 to 1. We don't know shell radius yet and height, but the thickness is all dx. So the x is already given. Okay, so for this question, then let's find the shell height. Shell height is the bigger radius minus the smaller radius. So bigger radius is this line, which is y equals x, and the smaller radius is uh, this curved line, which is x squared. Because we just want only like, if you draw it again, this is y equals x, this is x squared. 
we just want this much line, meaning we have to do x minus x squared for the height, x entire thing, and x squared is this much. That's why we do y equals x height as x minus x squared. So this becomes x minus x squared. Okay, we have that, and we want to find the radius, which is this line. So the radius in this line, if you look at it like closely, x equals 3. So we just want this much line. And the entire thing is from 0 to 3. So the entire thing is 3. And the radius, uh, this much, ra this much um, stuff is y equals x. So this is x. And we just want this much line or it goes all the way up till here, right? Which is why we do 3 minus smaller radius, x. So our volume is 2 pi 0 to 1, 3 minus x, x minus x squared dx. So the correct answer for this question is b. So this question asks to find um, the work if it's needed to stretch the spring of 2 inches beyond its natural length. And it says if the work needed to stretch a spring 2 feet beyond its natural length is 8 feet per pound. So when you want to find the work, you have to first find the force function fx to like find the work. So let's find the force function first. Force function is some kind of constant k times the difference of a length which is stretched by. So force is given as 8 feet per pound and we don't know k and it is needed to stretch a spring 2 feet beyond. So x is 2 which gives k as 4 feet per pound. Okay and it says it's needed to, to stretch the spring 6 inches. So one thing note in this question is 1 feet is 12 inch and if it needed to stretch to 6 inches this means it's 0 0.5 feet okay so we have a 0 0.5 feet till 1 oh wait sorry it's uh, beyond its natural length so natural length is 0 whenever you have natural so whenever you have a natural length it's 0 it's always starting at 0 so it's 0 and it's till 6 inches which is equal to 0 0.5 so it's 0 0.5 and we are given k is 4 feet per pound which is 4 but we, we write fx inside of the integrand and k is already inside of fx that's why we write f we write 4 inside and then we write x and then write dx to find the work so if you integrate it, this is 2x squared, 0 to 0 0.5 integration. 2, 0 0.5 squared, minus 0 squared. This just becomes 1 half feet per pound. So the answer for this question is E.